With spooky season lurking around, it's a perfect time for demons to take their final stand. Hey guys, welcome back to another Pro Guides Team Fight Tactics video. This time, we present you the Synergies tier list for Patch 9.21. It's time to learn what's top in the meadow once again. We're here to provide you with a new Synergies tier list created by our pro analyst from Diamond to Challenger's rank. Keep in mind that you should never force a composition and that going for a synergy in S tier does not guarantee you a victory over a synergy in C tier. There are many other factors involved between items, what champions you get from early to late game, and what you roll consistently. However, we're here to show you what are the synergies that are the most worthwhile to consistently place in the top four. We evaluate not only how consistently the build wins, but also how hard the criteria are to achieving the build, the items required, and also the synergy at its different points of the game. But before we begin, be sure to click our link below in our description to see more in-depth guides, builds, and ways to win you your next games. There are many courses designed by pro players within the top 1% of the game to teach you the meta and how to effectively climb up the ladder. S-tier synergies are the strongest of the bunch, being either easily adaptable or extremely powerful if built properly. A-tier synergies are strong, but not completely meta-changing. They see lots of play and are quite consistent at getting you top 4. B-tier synergies are around average, not typically synergies you build around, but maybe something you fit in temporarily. C-tier synergies are either extremely underwhelming or not worth building around. And finally, D-tier synergies are the worst of the bunch, typically never worth going for due to the meta along with its weak benefits. So with that, let's start with our S-tier synergies, which are Demons, Sorcerers, Dragons, Elementals, Void, and Brawlers. Demons are first up on our list, seeing a rise in play with the increase to early player damage and Brand's insane buffs. They're capable of bringing hell to players. Demons like Aatrox, Varus, Morgana, Brand, and Swain are capable of dealing tons of magic damage, and with the more favorable mid-game meta, Dragons are a lot less frequent, making them rise in power. They can fit in all sorts of sizes, two, four, and if you're feeling ambitious, even six demons, all being extremely useful in varying degrees. Darken can also fit perfectly into a demon comp, even if you're running one other demon, being extremely useful at providing mana for units like Aurelian Soul. Sorcerers are next, having powerful units, lots of options to adapt with, and being powerful overall. Though not as common early on, sorcerers reign dominant in the mid and late game, greatly amplifying many ultimates and easily winning you the fight. With units like Aurelian Soul, Pantheon, Karthus, Misfortune, Cho'Gath, and so much more, magic damage is already insanely high. Three sorcerers alone is an incredibly strong synergy to fit into any team. Dragons still remain at the top, with Guardians being prominent to provide the armor and assassins falling out of favor. They are one of the strongest late game synergies due to how relevant magic damage ultimates are. The three dragons, Shivana, Aurelian Soul, and Pantheon, are also all powerful priority units, usually benefiting your team by adding them in as well. Elementals are similar to dragons, providing a strong defensive utility while having powerful units. Lissandra, Kennen, and Brand are all extremely powerful mid game units, while replacing Lissandra or Kennen with Anivia in the late game. The Golem can absorb a ton of damage and provide peel against assassins or straight up face tank a Draven if necessary. Lissandra and Kennen can also work incredibly well as early and mid game carries using Guardian Angel and Morellanomicon. Void rise again to the top, but not with Kassadin Hyper Carry. With the buffs to Kaisa and Cho'Gath, they excel as the ultimate late game carries. Kaisa is especially powerful with Giant Slayer and Rage Blade, easily reaching max attack speed and shreds enemies with true damage in seconds. She's not only broken in Summoner's Rift, but in TFT as well. Cho'Gath, on the other hand, not only provides a ton of AoE true damage, but his crowd control still remains as one of the best in the game. And finally, we have Brawlers. After multiple buffs to Brawlers, they found their place in the meta being extremely tanky and capable of dealing tons of damage as well. There are carries like Jinx and Kai'Sa to deal the damage while they do the tank, Vi and Jinx giving Hextech, or Cho'Gath, Rek'Sai, and Kai'Sa giving Void. Brawlers are a solid frontline, capable of fitting in the early, mid, and late game compositions, giving them an S tier. Moving on, we have our A tier synergies. In this list, we have Yordles, Guardians, Phantom, Ninja, Knights, and Imperials. Let's start with the little guys, Yordles! With Wild falling out of favor, Yordles see more play as a powerful mid-game option, dodge chance making them significantly harder to kill, and able to utilize items like Iceborne Gauntlet. However, they don't reign in our S tier due to them being a bit weaker in the early and late game. Early game, the only Yordles available are Tristana, Lulu, and a 1 star 3 cost. In the late game, there's too much AoE magic damage for their dodge chance to be significant. Besides Tristana, there's Lulu, Vagar, Poppy, Nar, and Kennen for powerful Yordles, giving lots of room to adapt and only really needing three of them. Protectors of the Draven's Guardians rise into the meta with Leona, Aurelian Soul, and Pantheon being a powerful late game trio. 
Braum might be a bit weaker, but Pantheon and Leona are powerful frontline units in the late game. Leona capable of shutting down carries, and Pantheon providing an AoE Morellonomicon. However, they don't take the place in our S tier due to Leona and Pantheon being late game units where physical damage usually means a lot less than magical damage. The synergy everyone hates, Phantom. Kindred, Mordekaiser, and Karthus are all decent units in the meta while providing a debuff to a random enemy unit that proves to be very annoying. Enemy has a 3 star cannon hyper carry? Just Phantom it! With the Phantom synergy only requiring 2 units, it can easily be slotted in along with Knights, Rangers, and Sorcerers, making it easy to adapt to. Ninja is next up, more specifically toward 1 Ninja. 4 Ninjas is decent, but with Dragons and Guardians running rampant in the late game, it isn't as favored in that particular matchup. However, 1 Ninja is always easy to put in, with Zed and Shen being strong units in the early game, Kennen being an insane mid and late game carry, and Akali being strong if you're just looking for a filler carry. Knights who say knee! They've been nerfed a few times, though remain quite strong even in this meta. They are only A tier, with true damage from Giant Slayer and magic damage burst coming from Aurelian Souls being insane counters to them. They're still powerful early and mid game though, with their units being strong. And finally, we have Imperials. With Draven receiving slight nerfs and Giant Slayer's popularity, Imperials have fallen to A tier along with Knights. Draven can't utilize Giant Slayer as well as Jinx or Kai'Sa. Katarina and Swain are decent units as well, but if you're running all four Imperials, you can only get ideal items on one unit, making it not as favorable. Typically in the late game, you'd only go for Swain for Demon Shapeshifter now, rather than four Imperials. B tier synergies. B stands for below average. In this list, we have Blademasters, Hextech, Nobles, Assassins, Shapeshifters, Rangers, and Gunslingers. Blademasters is first on our list, being decent but nothing worth building around completely. Draven, Aatrox, and Yasuo are decent Blademasters but get outmatched by other hyper carries. They can utilize on hit items decently and still synergize well with Gunslingers for a glass cannon team. However, Blademasters are not too favored in this meta and quite weak overall. Hextech is next, receiving nerf after nerf to its disable duration. While it can be easily put in with Jinx and Vi, it's not worth forcing anymore with the item disable being too short to be noticeable. Along with that, Jace is mediocre in this meta and Camille is never worth putting in for Hextech with Vi and Jinx being so much better even at 1 star. Nobles have seen more play lately with the rise of Kai'Sa. While it might be strong, we only leave it as a B tier for multiple reasons. Void Brawlers with Kai'Sa Hyper Carry is already a risky composition, capable of failing at any time. The only time Nobles is viable is Kai'Sa Nobles, where Nobles is also risky to build with many of the units being weak. Nobles has a bad mid game as well, with Lucian being the only decent carry. He's not enough to carry them and heavily depend on Jinx later on. However, at that point, why not just run Void Brawlers, which is a lot more reliable. Assassins have fallen, being unfavorable in this meta due to Guardians, Yordles, Elementals, and Dragons being prominent. While the units might be somewhat decent, they face too many counters to win consistently, leaving it as a B tier. However, they have a decent early if you're running 3 Assassins and can work in lower elos if not many people are running defensive synergies. Shapeshifters is next, left as a B tier due to its below average early and mid game, but strong late game with Shivana, Nar, and Swain. Units like Nidalee, Jace, and Elise are easily outshined by many synergies early on, and 6 Shapeshifters is not worth running as well, having too much risk and little reward. Rangers only get a B tier. We saw buffs to 2 Rangers, which can be useful if you're looking to use Giant Slayer, but can't seem to fit in Kai'Sa or Jinx. While Vayne is quite weak, Ash, Kindred, Varus, and Kai'Sa are all decent, though typically not worth running together as 4. Kai'Sa also prefers Void Brawlers over Rangers, as she can already easily hit maximum attack speed with Rage Blade and her ultimate quite quickly. And finally, we have Gunslingers at B tier. Every other Gunslinger is lacking, and it is usually never worth going 4 or 6 Slingers because of it. They have adaptability options item wise, having Disarm for Assassins or Curse Blade for tankier teams. However, they're too squishy and deal not enough damage to justify it. For our C tiers, we have Glacial, Exile, Robot, and Wild. Last but not least, at D, we have Pirates. Let's start with Glacial. This synergy is somewhat decent, providing a short stun utility. However, it's far too inconsistent and most Glacial units don't synergize well with each other. Its inconsistency, weak buff, and inability to build around makes it easily a C tier. Next up, Exile is a somewhat decent synergy only used on Yasuo. However, Yasuo is not as popular with other 5 costs outshining him. Exile only serves as a synergy to make him tankier and nothing else. It also has an anti-synergy with Guardians, a popular late game filler. Robot is a simple synergy, giving Blitzcrank full mana at the start of the game. It serves as a great way to pull a unit right away, but doesn't do anything otherwise. It can easily be countered by Quicksilver Sash and Trap Claw, making it a pretty weak synergy overall. 
Wild receiving nerfs and 5 costs being more relevant has pushed them to C tier. It's typically not worth building for Wild in mid or late game, with many options being stronger and having more options to adapt to. 2 Wild might be somewhat decent, but it's definitely underwhelming to some synergies like Phantom. And finally, in our D tier, as the worst synergy, we have Pirates. Pirates used to be a decent synergy to run early when you planned on sandbagging. However, the major buffs to early game damage has made them completely unusable due to the pirates being weak and not synergizing well with each other. While a gold is somewhat decent most of the time, you sacrifice way too much health for it to be worth it, leaving them as the worst synergy in this patch. We hope you guys enjoyed this TFT synergy tier list. Do you agree with all of our ratings? What synergy do you think is the strongest in set 2? Let us know in the comments below as we read each and every one of them. We're not kidding. Like and subscribe and we'll see you all next time.